Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's show. Today, we're going to be answering a question we received from South Carolina, and we're very excited because it's our first voicemail question that we've received. So we're going to play that for you and then get to the answers. Hi there. My name is Paula, and I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. I'm in the early stages of product development, but wanted to start selling some clothing items online now. It's just me and my best friend. Do you know what steps we should take regarding filing legalities before starting an online shop? And would those same steps apply to selling on a platform like Etsy or Shopify? Also, if we were starting from scratch, would you recommend filing as an LLC? Any advice or info you have would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, y'all. I'm Karen. I'm a CPA, entrepreneur with big ideas, and I'm the mom. I'm Katie. I'm a payroll specialist, business owner, and detail-oriented person that makes things happen. And I'm the daughter. Welcome to Cheers to Business. All right. Exciting. Very. It I'm, is. I'm very excited. I think it's super cool that she reached out. Yeah. Um, I think that's the very first step. And it's not local. And it's not local. So that's really exciting. Um, so Paula, wow. First of all, there's kind of a lot of chunks to that. So let's go just one by one. Yeah. I got to break it down. It's, there's no blanket answer that'll answer all that. Karen, I'm going to let you kind of take the hand with this as a CPA. Now, you're not telling someone exactly what to do. These are just no. kind of general ideas to think about. Yeah. And, you know, I need a big old disclaimer. Get a tax advisor. You know, find somebody that's in your area that you can sit down with and look look in the eye and find out what you need to do. And I think one of the things I, I took away from listening in that was the e-commerce. Mm-hmm. You know, a tax preparer that's just a, does tax returns is not necessarily going to be very fluent in what it means to be, you know, e-commerce online, whether it's Shopify or Etsy or whatever it is. It's more than just a tax return. It's not. It is. It's so much more because you have sales tax. See, and the Supreme Court came down and changed all the sales tax rules across the board for everything on the internet now. So that's a topic I'm not going to get into on this show because you need somebody who knows about that stuff. So we're going to kind of stay away from e-commerce just a little bit, but really get into forming a business. Yeah. So that's where I want to ask, you know, LLC, S Corp. She mentioned her best friend, partnership. All, Ooh, can you yeah. can you touch on all of that? Again, that's really a couple of different subjects. And I don't care what kind of business you're doing. You know, you said online clothes and boutique. Uh, it doesn't matter. I don't care if you're going to throw a sledgehammer. You know, the structure of your business is so important. And people don't realize that if you are expecting investors, an LLC is going to be better. If for taxes and it's just going to be you, then, you know, an S Corp is going to be better. Now, what happens is a lot of people become LLCs. What you need to do first, as soon as you form those papers, is check with your state. Because I know in Alabama, you only have 45 days to file a privilege tax return, or they're going to pop you with the penalty. And the lawyers don't really, you know, it's no fault of theirs, but they don't really tell the people. So I can find out a year later that somebody started an LLC, and all of a sudden they've incurred penalties, and they don't know why. And so you need to check with the state. Every state, Delaware, Mississippi, they have franchise tax. They have annual filings. So really make sure with the state. Is the state helpful if you call? Yeah, they really are. And some states are better than others. Would that be the Department of Revenue? Yeah, start there. And they'll, okay. they'll switch it everywhere well, else. Even, Secretary of State. Well, First is Secretary of State because you got to reserve the name. That's what I was going to say. I um, A while back, I had thought of something. So I designed this logo, you know, just kind of playing around. And then I found out the name wasn't available. Yeah. And I was like, oh. That's the well. first thing. Before you even have, if you get an attorney, legal Zoom, good luck with that one. And whoever does your paperwork, you don't want to pay them to do it and then find out you can't even use the name in that state. So as far as going, if I was going to enter into a business with my best friend or just anybody. Make sure you stay best friends for one thing. Well, that's kind of my question is, you know, I'm thinking of the future. And if one person wants to get out or, you know, I I hate to think like that. If you were going in with somebody else, spend the money up front, getting an operating agreement that, you know, what happens if somebody wants out? What happens if somebody dies? You know, you don't want to be in business with their spouse if you built something profitable and, you know, God forbid bed somebody drops dead or hits by bus you know you've got to think about those things do you want to be in business with their with their husband because it's they're going to get their shares unless it's different in writing so get an attorney to do that paperwork if, especially if you're going to do it anyway i need to put that out there but if you're going in business with somebody you need to have it down on paper just read it out loud to each other make sure that there's no misunderstandings because when you do it you're married to them it's a business marriage and you don't want a business divorce because there's been a ton of friendships that have been you know, shot to because of 
just trying to do business. So if someone is doing an and I know we said we weren't going to get into the e-commerce too much, but if someone is selling online, do they? What about a business license? Well, you have to have a business license in your city, in your county, in your state. State and county are usually really, really cheap, so don't worry about those. As far as you know, the price of them, but the city's based on your revenues. But here's the thing: they can only charge you for what the business you're doing in that city. So, for example, if I'm selling in Mississippi, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, and Alabama, I want to be able to use the revenue that I'm doing in my city. And they all have minimums, and everybody's going to try to get you. Something else you hit on, too, my mind just jumped. But on the sales tax, there are about seven states that have sales tax that are city, county, and state. All the rest of them have just one, one sales tax. Uh, Mississippi has 7% across the board, and they divvy it up. Alabama doesn't. If you set up a store here, and you're taking your truck all the way around, if they see your truck in Dolphin Island, Dolphin Island's going to want a business license. I want to get back to the e-commerce, but that's just how weird it is. Every state is so totally different, so you got to have somebody that knows that. Well, well, especially if you're selling in those other states. Exactly. But I would think, say you're an online business, but you want to do a pop-up shop. Meaning, you know, just randomly set up a location to sell some merchandise. They're going to want you to have a business license. So I, it's if I was doing that, I would get a business license. Yep. For and sure, then they're going to want the sales tax for that area. So my biggest suggestion is when you you need to research your platforms of where you're going to put your stuff out. Because, you know, she mentioned Shopify and Etsy. You know, which platform is going to do the most for you? At the least amount of cost, of course, but are they going to handle the revenue collection for the sales tax? And they're going to pay it in, and they're just – you don't have to do it. That's not what you do. Again, stay in your circle and why not clean my own house. So what about getting an EIN? I know oftentimes that's something I've seen people rush out and do. EIN meaning federal identification number, which yeah. you have to have for a lot of things. You know, Should they get that themselves or let someone else get it? If you have a good CPA, they're going to do everything for you. The lawyer drop the paperwork, then you take the paperwork to the CPA, then get your you know your federal ID number. You know every person has a social. Well, every business should have a federal ID number, and that's called an EIN. Employer identification number. Yeah, they, I mean, they got so many different names on it. The application's called an SS4, and you can go online and you can actually get your own online. It's just easier. I know I don't charge to get the setup done because I don't want to have to go fix it later. You know, new businesses usually don't have a lot of money. And so if you say, I'm going to charge you $100 to do this, I go, oh, I'll just do it all myself. And then it's wrong. And then, and then it's wrong. Them. And then I got to fix it. And then it costs more. So it's just easier for us to, we just do it. Exactly. And plus I want them set up right. You as a business owner need to be worried about getting your, you know, your distribution, getting your inventory, getting it priced right, getting the right platform. You need to be worrying about that kind of stuff. And so find somebody that can handle all this other crap. So besides from all the, you know, legal stuff, there's all that extra stuff as well. You know, do you have your logo, your certain font that you use for your branding? So your Facebook matches your website. Is your website built? You know, well, is the name even available? You know, before you when you check the state to see if it's registered on the legal side, check make the, sure you can get a domain with the same name. If that that's works. What, otherwise, and then what if your logo is the one you want? Is There is one out there and it's trademarked. There are sites you can do all this research ahead of time to see if, you know, the logo that you want, if the domain that you want. Um, I've actually renamed a business because it was available for the state, but I couldn't get a website with the domain that I wanted. So I actually changed, backed up and rechanged my whole thought process and named the business something else. Yeah, tagline, you know, it's all of that stuff, that, the branding side of it. And there's people who specialize in that as well. Just Well, like, we did it with Cheers to Business. I mean, we looked, and there is another Cheers to Business. I think they had two podcasts. Uh, ours is the one with the wine glass, if anybody's listening. But, you know, it's all important. We went through a few names when we were thinking about doing this, and it's, we kept coming back to wine, so here we are. Um, but you think about every, anything that you do that's putting you out there is a business. Let's get back to LLC and S Corp real quick. There's really four ways you can be a business, and that's a sole proprietor. You're just going out there doing business. You can get the paperwork and be an LLC. LLCs are great with partnerships and especially if you're going to have investors later on. You can split the profits different than ownership in an LLC. On an S-corporation, you still become an Inc. 
but still you had to file the forms to be an S corporation with the IRS. So LLC is going to be taxed just like a sole proprietor. That means you're going to get hit with self-employment tax, FICA tax, Social Security, Medicare. Whereas an S corp, the profit flows through with no no FICA tax, no self-employment, no Social Security, Medicare. Now the government knows that. So they're going to want you to be on a reasonable W-2. And so this goes into a whole other conversation. And just remember that if you're an LLC, you can be taxed as an S corporation, but you have to stay that way five years. But if you're making a profit, it's so cost beneficial because you save the self-employment tax. Was that too much? Knowledge. No, <laughs> no, it's it, people need to know that. Well, people who are kind of getting ready to make that decision, they're going to want to know that. Now, if they're not, then, yeah, they probably tuned out. But Yeah, I think this is more of an information show. And thank you again for the question because it is important more than us being entertaining. I think we should ask Johnny, honestly, because of your merchandise yeah. and selling. So I would love oh, yeah. I would love to ask you your thoughts, especially from the online, you know, using Shopify or I don't know if you know Etsy. Our producer has deep fried threads right and so he sells online and so deep fried studios deep fried we're in the south all right he's gonna johnny's gonna come over to a mic real quick okay yes i'm on another show yeah <laughs> we like having you on our show yes so awesome tell us about the online selling world okay i have deep fried threads which is uh, t-shirts and apparel i do belts and all types of stuff stickers so I started out with the idea of not having really any of that and just got the thing started and got moving and started selling and worried about what I was going to do in my personal taxes. Yeah, it was one of the ideas see to get if started. It can be pro- if it can be profitable for right. before you spend all the money so, doing that, this. That's when it would be filed on a Schedule C, correct? Yes. On mm-hmm. your 1040, so, which yep. is your individual and tax Because I was listening to that, and I don't want to scare Paula by like, oh, my gosh, that's all this stuff. That's when you're really like, oh, my gosh, we're making some real money here. Yeah. But you can get started by Shopify. This is the one I use, Shopify.com. They have actually consultants you can actually pay. And, and also nice. a lot of free stuff, too. Tons of questions on Shopify. Uh, that you can ask questions because that's, a lot of people just have a hobby that baseball cards or dolls or whatever, and they create these stores and they well, just Well, we did start. a podcast on that, turning yeah. your hobby into a business. It's amazing. And so that's kind of how I got started. Now, I partnered with somebody because he was going to do the fulfillment side for me at a much bigger company. Mm-hmm. And that's when we, f- we filed the LLC together because we're a partnership. We're splitting profits and he handled other things. But, but that's still taxed like you're a self did, and, he a, and he went straight to a CPA and went, straight, we went to an attorney first to form the company. Right. And then, then we went to a CPA to do all the paperwork correctly and then he found out something that was on shopify that can you add to your shopify that pays all the taxes so, nice so it, it, it's a computer system that like you said it's so different oklahoma is different than maine maine, is, different. maine is different than oregon so the idea is if you're selling online let somebody else figure all that out and i think shopify gives you a lot of uh, help with that because there's no way you could do it by yourself. That's great. How would you, I wouldn't want to do how it. How would you know what Kalamazoo, Missouri is? <laughs> there's no way you would know what that I, is. We have clients and we yeah. file for other states and I mean you have to we're having to learn their Department of Revenue yeah. and it's and whoops no. they don't take whoops no they don't take whoops <laughs> and, and I would say you know, get your EIN number because that's an easier thing to do get compliant with your state and your local at the bare minimum and, you don't know and, what and you don't know but right. somebody else knows and I didn't know if I needed a local that was put, brilliant right and that, next t-shirt <laughs> and, and to be honest my idea was I thought I'd be doing a lot more sales all over the country I really did and now I'm actually doing a more wholesale model where I'm selling locally in other stores uh, okay and so early on I went ahead and got a local business license and it has helped so much because I do pop-ups all the time and it gives me that opportunity and I think it only costs like $125 a year it's or something a, yeah when you renew by yeah. mail it's 130 minimum. And like I said you can do it throughout your personal taxes I just think it gets kind of muddy and I don't want to muddy it up you know and it does I, and I, it's kind of nice to have that separation plus well, you have write off it's, it's a liability protection credit card you get the yeah. li- you get the deductions either way because if you make okay. an income I got you but it is easier to have that EIN number and have it separate from yourself. That's right. the liability protection. And yeah. when they start making profit, that's when you want to have the conversation of that LLC being taxed as an S corporation. Because you as a single person, yeah. you can file that single member LLC on your 1040, on your tax return. In fact, they will throw it back to you if you try to file an LLC return. 
Wow. If you have to be, if it's one person, if you have a partner, it's actually the returns filed on a form 1065, which a, is a partnership that's return. A K, and that's a schedule K-1. Something. You get a K-1. Yeah. You know, if you're an employee, you get a W-2. If you're a subcontractor, you get a 1099. If you're part owner in a business, you're going to get a K-1. Yeah. So how the apparel company has e-commerce. You know, the studio here is services, totally different because the way taxes yes. work and everything, don't, don't tax services. The so. services would be taxed in Mississippi, but they're not in Wow, I did not know that. Yep. But, you know, that was different. I set that up the same way, did, you know, formed the company, did the things like that, did all the local, again, local uh, business license. But it is a lot different. And I don't want to ever get on their radar. I don't want to get on the government's <laughs> radar. It's hard to get off once you get on. Yes. And, I, and, and lots of it is. It's confusing, Paula. It really is. But the thing is, you can kind of fix some things after the p- fact. But go online, ask some people, go to other e-commerce things on like face group, Facebook yes. groups for e-commerce stores and ask questions on those open boards. But make sure People the answers are you. coming by professionals. Well, but, but also, but, but again, again, take everything with a grain of salt. Yes. But the idea is, but there are some people out there want to help you. And you know that there's a store and out there. And some people think they know everything and, and they don't. They do. So be careful. And, and I, I wouldn't take tax advice for someone who's not a CPA. But I think he means more of the personal experiences of growing okay. and stuff. But also someone might just, you know, tell you something and say, oh, I didn't think about that. But and I've just seen people get in trouble. Else. Yeah. People are willing to help you. And I know there's a store out there that you've seen that you're doing what you do and they're really successful. Email that person and ask, yeah. how did you start? Yeah. How did you do things? And most people are very, they, oh, you found me. Thank you. And they, they will tell you, here's what, well, they'll go, here's the first thing I'm glad I did. And here's the one thing I sure wish I'd have done. <laughs> and listen to that, I, what I sure wish I'd have done, because that person had a lot of time and effort. They spent fixing something they didn't do right to begin with. Those life lessons. And I would even love to take what we used on another show, Jeff, with Yellow Hammer Coffee, is document your journey, mm-hmm. just your growth. I oh, think yeah. people who identify or, you know, love your brand or love your products, what, I'm not even sure. Did she mention what she was selling? Online clothing. clothing. Clothes. You yeah. know, people who love your clothing, they want to identify with you and watch your journey as you grow and become more successful. You know, somebody inspired you to start doing this. So inspire somebody else. And I think get, uh, give back just makes you more successful in the long run. Cheers. Cheers. And you're a CPA. Yes. You're a payroll person. Yes. You'll give somebody 10, 15 minutes if they're asking you a legitimate question about it. happens in the grocery store. So, it happens at the mall. I love to talk about and, and, it. Yeah. And everybody knows a CPA. Now, make sure you have the right type of accounting. When I started my company, which Karen is helping me fix right now, <laughs> I went to a very high-end lawyer. He does billion-dollar stuff, and he was doing me a favor. I'm not, And it was great. He did me a huge favor. But I think it was I was not – on that rung of the ladder that he's on, you need to kind of find somebody that deals with the rung of the ladder that you you're on. You are not going out on the stock market since you hang your shingle. You know, bring it back down to right. to the earth. It's and like I said, it was great. It was like and, and it was like wow, I was so helpful. Being like glad that he wanted to help me out because I knew what he did. He's a you know he's an attorney for but roughly that's the only way he knows how to stars. do it right. And what they did, they set it up where roughly they did the same way. They set up my company just like they set up very rich country stars, <laughs> country music stars company, which is great. But you look honest, important. It, well, but it made me feel like, oh, I got the same setup as so and so. But you didn't need the same and, setup. And I didn't need the same, but it's fine. And now it, we're working on it now. But the thing is, at least start as you go. Federal, you got to deal with. The state, you got to deal with, and deal with your city. The other stuff, you can you'll you can figure it out as you're going, and get the store up and start selling. And this is going to sound so silly, but find somebody that you can sit down and look in the eye and have a conversation. They don't mm-hmm. make you feel stupid. Yeah, I can't yes. stand when people come to me like that. There's no dumb questions. In I this don't stuff, know guys. what you. I don't know how to produce. I don't know how to yeah. sell clothes. I don't know how to cut grass. That's why I love my insurance agent. Yeah, they're just there's not that language. There. You find that relationship. We keep saying don't sell just build relationships but you've got to find that person you're comfortable with because then they care about you and they're going to tell you the things you need to know and they cannot tell you in the first meeting why because it's too much and you want to mm-hmm. go just shoot yourself in the head well That's, not literally don't say Stop. that okay but it's how, overwhelming but how you start might not be who you are in three months you won't it evolves. i can tell you that right now because things i thought i'd be doing with deep fried threads is not what i'm doing today it because we saw what was working and then and that's what you go with and mm-hmm. that's why I'm more local now. We thought we would do things more regional and more national. Nope, I am local, local, local. And Paul, we wish you so much success, but you know you you're not sure. Nobody can tell you is this is going to go left two places and then take a right. You should sell from a website or you, you should, should sell. do this or you should do that. 
don't let people tell you that. You just got to go with the flow. Yeah. And like Johnny said, whatever is working and I, keep us updated. I yes, want to hear I do how. Too. Yeah. I think the G in gut stands for God. And I really do believe that. And that if you listen and you learn from all the people, learn from their mistakes, not just the successes. Find the people, go to their circles, find out what they know and stay on that path. The taxes and stuff will work itself out. If you're making money, you're going to pay some tax. Just do it the best way. And that's where the LLCS Corp comes in. That's that conversation, but that's down the road. First, you got to get set up correctly. Worry about that other stuff as it comes. Don't take on too much. I'll say one thing. I went and got, uh, I do all of my payments for my company with a company credit card. Yes. Just that credit card. So that way I've got a traceable record. There's no cash. I'm not doing petty cash. I am using that credit card to go down my expenses. And brother, that has helped me out so much with all my bookkeeping and everything. Plus, I got a little cash flow because I'm using my credit card properly. And that's why it only cost me $142 for me and my husband to fly to Vegas for our 30th wedding anniversary. I I do. I just got a new American Express that gave me an awesome cash back. And what I said was, I don't want none of your Apple products. I don't want your golf club rewards. I want take money off my darn bill did every I, month. Did I tell you what I do with the Capital One? What? <laughs> I'll build the rewards all year because I'll pay for, you know, we charge, 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 yeah. and then pay it off every month. And so in November, I go get the reward points, and I get gift cards, and I give them away as Christmas presents. That's great. <laughs> that, that's money in your pocket. Exactly. <laughs> I figure I spent that money. I earned and it. And so, okay, keeping up with, you know, when you're starting a business, clearly it's nothing but expenses. Yes. Keeping up with those. Do yeah. they need QuickBooks? I, I'm a huge advocate for QuickBooks for bookkeeping yeah. purposes. And there's a good one out now, too, called Zero. Okay. Um, I use FreshBooks. I yeah, love there's it. FreshBooks. There's a bunch of different ones out now. It's, I think QuickBooks has the biggest market. Okay. Uh, they have QuickBooks online. I know we host a, a lot of them. And there's lots of free classes you can take to teach yeah, you how to YouTube do all YouTube videos. Yeah, YouTube. Videos, yeah. Um, we offer set up and training and we're like a support system so like your cpa firm the cpa firm is yeah. like a support system you can, any of the, can call up for quickbooks well, advice and i've taught quickbook uh, classes too and you can google quickbooks pro advisors in your area and you know even if it's a cpa firm that you don't work with they offer quickbooks do you know we training. have that because dawn and Mafa, she's our little quickbooks guru and we do that we have we do quickbooks work with companies and they use another cpa Mm-hmm. That's fine. Yeah, you know we don't have to do everything in the world, but that's the service that we offer. Katie, so, you said it when you're marketing, document what you're doing because that's kind of good for you and how you grow the company and your and your your journey. Yeah. The other thing is document your everything expenses. from this moment. Yeah. From the <laughs> idea of like document the federal ID number and the state thing, and yeah. just document everything because at least you've got a record of what you're in, acting in. Hey, good faith, I've got a good one. Right, it, you're acting in good yes. faith. And here's another thing too is because at the end of the year you're going to get down and you're going to go and they're going to say. Do you have a business checking account? As soon as you get all the name, the EIN, the business license, formation paperwork, that's what you got to take to the bank to open up a business bank that's account. Right. Now run everything through there. I know there's no money in it. You got startup money from somewhere, put it in the business checking account, then spend it because you get a year down the road and life's been a whirlwind. You're not going you're gonna forget about that hundred and fifty eight dollars down at probate that you spent to form this mm, damn thing. That's right. So run it all through one account it's just, and with a credit card that you pay with that account and it's going to be so much easier at the end all right so get formed right yes <laughs> um, document your journey document your income and expenses it's part of your marketing if you document it and put it out there and then go with the flow and get started and Cause, get cause you, started you can and start go. selling today you, yeah. can, you can deal with the money later but you can start selling today all right be willing to sit back and listen to your gut and see which way that you're supposed to go with this thing it's a great journey cheers to selling Cheers to business. Cheers to having the guts to start from scratch. And here, get here. Out there and woo, do it. <laughs> Make the jump. Y'all, thank you so much for listening and being here with us today. I'm Karen. I'm Katie. Please be sure to subscribe to Cheers to Business podcast on iTunes or anywhere else that you get your podcast. Visit our Facebook and be sure to give us a like. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to discuss, shoot us an email from the website, cheerstobusiness.com.